Hello, dear student. I welcome you uh, to this lesson where we are going to look at Bible knowledge in Form 3. In the Malawian curriculum, uh, in Bible knowledge, uh, the MIC part, that is Form 3 and Form 4, uh, we study three books of the Bible. And the first book is the book of Isaiah. And from there, we look at the book of Luke, and we finally study the book of Acts. So, in this case, we are going to start with the book of Isaiah, the book of Isaiah. But this one in Form 3, as we start with the book of Isaiah, or before we start with uh, going deeper into the book of Isaiah, there is a need also for us to know more about the Bible. Because these three books that I have talked about, they are the books of the Bible, as the subject is Bible knowledge. Therefore, uh, the first thing that we have to look at is the use of the Bible, uses of the Bible. So I am your teacher, W.A. Maoa, and be there, be attentive, and follow through up to the end. Now, in this lesson, we are going to follow a number of uh, criteria or the objectives that we have to meet. So what are we supposed to meet by the end of this lesson? So at the end of this lesson, it is my expectation that you are uh, going to be able to explain the Bible as the inspired word of God and also to explain the uses of the Bible. So in this lesson, we are mainly going to uh, look at the Bible as the inspired word of God and also use. So it's a good lesson laying the background for the three books that we are going to uh, study in MSCE, that is in Form 3 and in Form 4. To begin with, let's start with the use of the Bible, the uses of the Bible. What do we use the Bible for? Now, in the first place, we have to know what the Bible is. So the Bible, the term Bible, what is it? The Bible refers to the sacred writings of the Christian religion comprising the Old and the New Testament. So Christians, you know, they go to church. As they go to church or various churches, they use a book uh, which is regarded as the sacred. Sacred, the word sacred, it means uh, they are uh, holy or very special because they, they are believed to be the word of God. So something that is sacred, it is something that is sanctified or something that is very special, that is put aside, something that is holy. So they are the holy writings of the Christian religion comprising the Old and the New Testaments. So the Bible uh, is the sacred writings comprising the New and the, or the Old and the New Testament. Now, in this lesson, uh, uh, we are going to follow through the question and answer. So I have my questions and I'll be explaining the answers pertaining to those questions as we try to meet the uh, success criteria, the objective of knowing what the Bible is and what do we use it for. So the first question is the definition of the Bible. The Second question is explain the Bible as the inspired word of God. We have said that it is a sacred or inspired or it is special words of God. What do we mean the Bible is inspired word of God? So during the process of writing and canonization, God was with the, the authors. So what do we mean when we say the Bible is the inspired word of God? What we mean therefore is that when the word or the words of the Bible were written, were also canonized. To be canonized is to be selected because there are so many uh, things or so many books that are written about God. But why only the Bible? So the selection of books that should uh, be compiled to be called the Bible, it means God 
was with the authors, the people who were selecting the books and the people who were writing the books. God worked through the people that wrote the scriptures as individual books. So God was working uh, through the people that wrote the scriptures as the individual books. So in the Bible, there are many books, Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, up to uh, Revelation. So we, what we are saying here is that God worked through the people uh, that were writing. So that's why we, that's what, why we say the Bible is the inspired word of God. And also, he also worked with those that collected the books into one collection known as the Bible. That is canonization. So canonization is the collection of books into one collection as the Bible. So here we see that God was with the people that were collecting this book of Matthew, this book of Haggai, this book of Isaiah, this book of Psalms, all that work. So was done by people who compiled it together. So God was with them. So that's why we say that the Bible is inspired word of God. Why? God was with the people during the canonization and writing of the Bible. Now, what is canonization? Of course, I just mentioned about that. But what is it? Uh, let us now dig deeper into the canonization. Canonization means the process of collecting authoritative books of the Bible. Just as I said, the collection of different books, the book of Jeremiah, the book of Ezekiel, the book of Psalms, the book of Joshua, that collection, putting them together, that is what is called canonization. Now, we are now going deeper to see what it means, uh, what is the use of the Bible. Uh, what are the uses of the Bible? So the Bible has got so many uses. So we are going to start by looking at this one uh, for worshipping. We use it for worshipping. So the Bible is used for showing the uh, showing of passionate religious devotion to one's God through praying. So through uh, passionate worship or passionate prayer, that is worship. Yeah, so we use the Bible for worshipping. And also, worshipping means the showing of passionate religious devotion to God. There is a time when you see that I'm dedicating this time to God. That one, that time when you do only the things pertaining to God, that is worshipping. So showing passionate religious devotion, uh, submitting yourself to God, a time when you submit totally to God at that time. You use the Bible as well. For meditation. So the Bible can also be used for meditation. So the Bible is, uh, when the Bible is read, one needs to correct, uh, to reflect on passages, read in order to understand it. So when the Bible is read, someone has to think Someone has to reflect about the passages that are read in order to understand it. So that one is meditation. So meditation really means reflection, reflecting deeply on spiritual matters. When you are thinking about the spiritual matters, that is meditation. You are at a quiet place and you are thinking, you are reflecting about maybe the word of God. Uh, that you know or that you have just understood. So we use the Bible again for meditation. And also for guidance and counseling. The Bible is also used for guidance and counseling. So after reading the Bible, people get pieces of advice on issues that affect their lives. So you can agree with me that the Bible is also used for guidance. There are some some parts there of the Bible, some passages there that we get guidance, that when we think about it, we feel like it's just the same as the things that are happening into our lives. Guidance and counseling means assisting and giving advice. So when you are given, you are being assisted uh, through an advice that is guidance and counseling. 
Also, the Bible is used for administration of justice and swearing. So the Bible is used as a way of assuring the court that they will not give any false information regarding the case. So if you have been to court, they ask you when you are in the, in the witness box, they say, okay, hold this Bible, say that you are going to say the truth uh, according to the Bible. So the Bible is used for administration of justice, especially in courts there. So the Bible is used by officers to assure people that there will be justice in the delivery of services to the people. When the president or the minister takes office, uh, then they take what is called the oath of office. They hold the Bible. Why? To assure the people that they are going to administer justice. They are going to be truthful to the people. So uh, we see there the use of the Bible. Administration of justice or swearing is a process or structure which allows conflict between parties to be settled by a body dedicated to that purpose. So we see there we're just defining justice or swearing in a process which allows conflict, uh, conflicting parties to be settled uh, through a dedicated way uh, or in a dedicated manner. For singing, so people uh, use psalms as songs for worship or and other scripture for uh, from other Bible books in churches and entertainment theaters. So we see that there are so many songs outside there that are composed, maybe taken from the Bible. So for singing, we also use the Bible. So theater means the stage where different entertainment activities they take place. So uh, we had, have mentioned of the this uh, the theater. So the book, uh, the Bible songs are composed, and those songs they are performed in theaters, in halls, uh, in stadiums, and wherever. So those are theaters. Singing means producing musical sound with the, the voice. So we know that already. For preaching and teaching, so we use the Bible for teaching as well as preaching. So the Bible is used to teach people in different aspects of life, such as uh, the, importance, the importance of loving one another. So preaching, the verses of the Bible, the passages of the Bible are read to the audience and interpreted. That one is preaching. For funeral rites, for funeral rites, also we use the Bible. So the Bible is used to comfort and encourage people, uh, to, uh, the relatives and friends of the deceased when someone has died. So, you know, when there's a funeral, usually there's someone who is there to read the Bible and interpret and uh, comfort the bereaved and encourage them. For wedding ceremonies, for wedding ceremonies, the Bible is also used in wedding ceremonies. So the pastor reads the scripture from the Bible reflecting on what it says about marriage and advising on what is expected from them as married people. So usually when say there is a marriage or wedding ceremony at church, the pastor uses the Bible and they read the passages about marriage and advising the couple, the wedding couple, on what is expected to the married people. For academics, for academics in schools, teachers use the Bible to teach about spiritual matters to develop an understanding of God. So teachers, in this course, we are going to use the Bible, passages of the Bible. So. Uh, why? Because the course is Bible knowledge. You need to have the Bible knowledge, the knowledge of the Bible. So we are going to use the Bible passages. So that is in academics. Source of healing. So we see that Christians today, they believe that they get healed through their faith in what the Bible teaches. So we see that the Bible teaches a lot of things and Christians today, they believe that when they read the passages of the Bible, you find that uh, they have their faith there that they are going to get healed. 
Now, from there, we have to finish with this other aspect of a prophet because it's an other aspect that uh, another aspect that we are going to find, especially when we'll be looking at the book of Isaiah, is the book of prophet Isaiah. So uh, throughout in form three, we are going to center much on the words of the prophet. But we need first to know who is a prophet before we come to know uh, what Isaiah, the book of Isaiah said, what the prophet did. So we are going to, uh, we have to know the prophet. Who is a prophet? A prophet is a person appointed by God to speak on his behalf. As simple as that, a prophet is someone appointed by God to speak on his behalf. Someone who carries the message of God. A prophet is a messenger of God. So therefore we see here that a prophet is a messenger of God. So the word the prophet uh, the word prophet comes from the Greek word prophetess, meaning the uh, to advocate or to speak. So to uh, prophetess in Greek it means to advocate or to speak to speak that is to prophetess or to to preach now what are the duties what are the duties state the duties or the roles of a prophet what does the prophet do much as we have said that he's someone who carries the message of god but what does he do speaking on behalf of god just as we have defined who a prophet is and also revealing the nature and attributes of God to people. We know God is attributed, has got so many attributes. The things or the definitions that we give God. He is all powerful. He is all living. He knows everything. Those are the attributes of God. So the prophet is there to reveal, to reveal those attributes of God. When we say that God is all powerful, how? So the prophet is there to show to the people how God is all powerful. Communicating the laws of God to people. So the prophet is also there to, uh, to communicate the laws of God to people. The prophet also is there to bring back the people to the obedience of God's law. So he's there to bring back the people, to bring them back to say, God wants this wants his people to follow this so he's there to bring back the people and follow god's laws foretelling god's future events so the prophet is also there to foretell what is coming according to what god has taught him so the prophet is there uh, to do a lot of things he is there to uh, tell the future according to god's plans revealing the truth about God, he is also, the prophet is there to reveal the truth about God. Also, the prophet is there exhorting leaders and people to maintain the love relationship with their God. So the prophet is there to tell the people to come back to God, to have or maintain a loving relationship with God. Observing social social political religious situations and say what god thinks about them so we also see about that so another duty of uh, the prophet is observing social political and religious situations and say what god thinks about them so we see there uh, the other duty apart from exhorting the people to maintain the loving relationship with their god uh, we see also that uh, the prophet is also there to let the people observe social and political and religious uh, situations and say what god thinks about them so uh, we see there the duties of the prophet another one here we see he's there uh, all the time being a conscious of society in that they guide the society on what is right or wrong or just or unfair so basically when we say there are prophets uh, the biblical prophets that we are going to study in this course we see that usually they are there to tell the people what is right and what is wrong 
and to ask the people what God says they should do. So we see there the other duty of the prophet. And also condemning people's sins and warning them of the coming punishment. When we'll be looking at the prophet Isaiah, the book of prophet Isaiah, we'll be looking at that. He'll be condemning, we'll see, we'll see him condemning the kings uh, and the people of their sins and also announcing the punishment for whatever they do. So those are the duties of the prophets. Now, let us proceed from there to see how can people be faithful to a, uh, to a covenant. In the book of Isaiah that we are going to look, we are also going to see that the prophet Isaiah is now and again uh, calling people to be faithful to God or to the covenant with God, to be a people of the covenant. But now, what is there in the covenant? So, uh, Obeying the commands of Yahweh, that's what we're going to see in the, uh, in the book of Isaiah, that he is calling the people to obey the commands of Yahweh, and also putting their trust in Yahweh alone, we'll see that one. Yeah, so basically, in the uh, remaining faithful to the covenant, what Isaiah says is basically the commands of Yahweh and trusting him alone. Now, the book of Isaiah is a, prof is a prophecy, is a prophecy, the words of a prophet. Now, what is a prophecy or an oracle? Now, a prophecy is a proclamation made by a prophet, often included or concluded by the phrase, the Lord says, or that says the Lord. So that is the proclamation uh, made by a prophet. Because we have said that the, the prophet is a messenger of God, someone who carries the message from God. Now, uh, him is not the owner of the message. So that proclamation of the, uh, the words of God is see what is called a prophecy. And usually what we are going to encounter in the book of Isaiah is usually the Lord says, the Lord says. It means that it's not him who is saying, but he has just carried that message. And a prophecy is a, a proclamation made by a prophet on behalf of God. Just said that, or just said that to say he is proclaiming, he is saying the words uh, from God. Now, um, there are religious leaders of today that take the role of Old Testament prophets. So, because we know. God still speaks. In the book of Isaiah, we are going to study much of how God interacted with the Jews or with the Israelites. But now, do we learn anything about God today? Do we see God in charge today? Or are there people who are taking the role of the Old Testament prophets today? So there might be some there. What are they then? Or who are they? There are people like the reverends, the bishops, the pastors, the priests, the apostles, the preachers. All these, they take the role of the Old Testament prophets. Why? Because they also carry the message of God. It's not their message. It's the message from God which they deliver to the people. They deliver the warnings and whatever to the people. So they take the role of the prophets. Now, we are saying that the book of Isaiah is the book of prophecies, but there are types of prophecies that we are going to meet when we analyze or when we go through that book of Isaiah. So what are these types of prophets, prophecies? So there are mainly two, uh, the war prophets, war prophets. And this one is a prophecy that denounces evil and announces punishment. So it denounces evil and announces punishment. So it says war. So it's like uh, proclaiming doom because of uh, the evil that the people do. So that is a prophecy, one type of prophecy. Another one is a will 
So war and will, you need to differentiate the two. War and will. So war, prophet, a uh, prophecy, it denounces evil and announces punishment. It usually tells uh, what is coming, the bad things that are coming because the people have done wrong. But the will prophecy, what is it? This one is a prophecy that announces the blessings. So the will prophecy is about the uh, the blessings. So when we'll be looking at the book of Isaiah, we'll look at those two. We'll be analyzing the two. We'll be getting those two prophecies, the war and the will prophecy. But now we also have another term here that we are going also to find in the book is and this one is the, the prophetic vision. What is a prophetic vision? So this is some, something that a prophet perceives in his mind or dreams that reveals God's word or truth. So prophetic vision is something that the prophet, the prophet perceives in his mind or dreams. So when you say this one is a prophet, he has the word of God. It doesn't mean that there is something like a reality that is there. They are the things that comes to his mind or into his dreams. And those are interpreted that uh, it is the revelation of God. So those are prophetic visions. So it is something that a prophet sees or hears in his mind or dream. So it is about the mind or the dream, not the things that, are, that come in the physical world like. So to this far, we have come to the end of our lesson today. Now, before I go, let me leave you with this exercise that you need to, uh, to practice. So number one, define the term Bible. So that one carries two marks. Usually, even in your final exam, when a question like that comes, it comes with two marks. Now, another question, explain what it means when it is said that the Bible is inspired word of God. What does that mean? So we have explained that one. So just recall that one, and that one carries three marks. Also, describe the uses of the Bible. We have described so many, so many. So just describe uh, as many as you can, because we have described so many here. So for six marks, try to get those six marks uh, for that question. State any three roles of a prophet. We just described the roles of a prophet. What are they? So just state any three. So for three marks, uh, state the uh, roles of a prophet. And also explain the two types of prophecies. We have explained the uh, types of prophecies. So uh, can you try to explain these two types of prophecies by writing? Define a prophetic vision. We just also uh, defined that one. So those are the questions of, uh, related to what you might encounter during your final examination. So when you follow through, understand them, then you'll be able to, un uh, to answer the questions freely. So in the next lesson, we are going to look at the book of prophet Isaiah. That's when we'll be starting looking at the inside of the book of the prophet Isaiah, the Bible prophet Isaiah. So we are going to look at that. So for the questions, I would love if you respond to that and you send your response so that I see how you can write because understanding is something something else and writing is something else. So if you try to write your answers on paper or wherever and uh, uh, have a screenshot and uh, uh, send it to me, then I will check how you can write. Because sometimes we understand things, but we fail to write. So I need to see how you can get the marks according to the questions that are there. But next, be there as we'll be looking at the book of the prophet Isaiah. So if you have anything uh, to ask or any question, please, uh, you can follow through uh, our website on Zolendo zolendo.org. There you find also other related materials that will take you, uh, you make you understand on different subjects, be it geography, biology, uh, agriculture, and any other subject. So enter this website, uh, zolendo.org, and there you'll find a number of 
things or items there. So if you like to make further consultations, you can also consult the references that I have provided here. But until next time, I am your teacher, W.A. Maua. See you next time. Thank you.